What's up guys, Mason Brock Anderson here, and this is DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Why not just Legends of... I don't, it's just like how Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Why do you have to say... Why do you have to say DC's Legends of Tomorrow? Just Legends of Tomorrow, that's enough. Um, I know the background is different, that I'm alone in the house, so I was like, let's do it in the living room today, and... Well, I'm almost alone. Anyway, so, this is the pilot episode, um, and I gotta admit, going into this, I was a little bit worried just because DC shows generally start off a little bit, eh, um, I mean, you look at Gotham, the whole first season was kind of eh, uh, Supergirl right now is eh, uh, first season of Arrow is eh, uh, and I haven't seen Flash yet, so, anyway. So, I was worried about that, but, you know, it was actually pretty good. But also, a, another thing that I didn't really think of until it started is that <clears throat> Flash and Arrow do tie in with this show. And so there's a lot of references and people that I haven't met yet. Um, I've, I've only seen, like, I've seen most of the first season of Arrow. Uh, so, like, whenever they showed Laurel's sister and the fact that she was in the League of Assassins, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess that's spoiled for me now. Um, and Because I, I had just gotten to the part where it was, uh, I think it was Laurel's mother talking about she might be alive. And so whenever I saw that, I was like, okay, so she is. And she's a part of the League of Assassins now. Okay, um, and you know, they, they have Arrow in there as well, talking to uh, Adam, which is pretty much just Ant-Man. I, I know I'm going to ruffle some feathers and stuff like that, but yeah, he looked like Ant-Man, a lot like Ant-Man. Now that being said, I don't know if he was in the other shows before Ant-Man ever came out, but Just, just gonna go ahead and leave it at that, and hope that DC fanboys don't like completely raid my house or something. Anyway, let's talk about the show. A um, couple of things that I found a little bit off. Um, one, how quick the opening was. I get that they were trying to like, you know, get into the story quickly, so they just rush through everything, it's like, here's this guy, and he shows up at the scene, he's like, hello, you know, flash, flash thing, whatever, that knocks him out and takes him to wherever he wants them, um, and so that's how it was for all of them, it was just like, shows them doing something, and then he just appears out, and like, hi there, I'm here to take you away now, and then that was it, um, I would have liked to see maybe a little bit, maybe the first episode be mainly about getting them together, um, and like finding them, Maybe trying to convince them to come along instead of just, here's this flashy thing that's going to take you wherever I want you. Because, um, I don't know, I, I it's not that I don't get it, because I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to make that scene quick so that there's more time in this episode for getting the plot going. Uh, you know, finding out about Vandal Savage and what the majority of this season will probably be about, which is... It's kind of it's set back in 1975, and maybe trying to stop him there. Um, so that that was one thing I didn't like. It was just too quick of an opening. Uh, would have liked a little bit more time dedicated to actually getting to getting these characters to come along. Which I want to say getting to know these characters, but that may just be because maybe uh, they've been shown in the other two shows, not because I haven't seen it. I don't know much about them. Um, so, you know, that is one of the, I guess, one of the things that I need to think about going forward is how much of this has already been shown. Because they talk about defeating Vandal Savage before, um, or destroying him. And so, I, I'm like, okay, so this is, this is something that has been talked about in the other shows. So anyway, I'm Losing my train of thought a little bit. 
Okay, so one of the one of the things that I think really stood out to me in this episode was what happens with Hawk Hawkman and Hawk Girl's son. Uh, whenever whenever they're talking about you know he dies uh, that day or 24 hours later, and they brought him on the ship, and then like he was seriously wounded. I was starting to think. What if they can't change time? What if all of this has already happened and they failed to save time? Um, because there's actually a game that I played, uh, the Zero Escape Trilogy. The third game's actually coming out this year, but one of the second game is set in a time when the main character has already gone back in time to try to save the world but failed. But he doesn't know this because the character that you're playing as is about to go do it, but his pa his future self has already gone back in time and tried to save the world but failed to do it, so the timeline he's living in is one where the world has not been saved. Um, and so I was kind of thinking, what if this is something similar? Like, what if in their time they've already tried to save the world? And so, you know, this, uh, I can't remember his name now, but the professor that is their son, what if he already died in their timeline the same way that he died here. You know, it says that his death was under mysterious circumstances. What if this is how it happened in real life? And then they kind of do explain um, what's going on in that uh, the the Time Master guy is like, well, time is always going to try to correct itself. So I'm like, okay, so that is why he still died anyway, because... Even if they are trying to change time, time still time is apparently an entity in and of itself that is trying to make it self still be the same thing. Um, so that's something interesting that they threw in, and I'm I'm glad that there is a reason for all of this, and this isn't just going to be like, oh yeah, I can just go back and you know move this rock over here, and now all of a sudden the world's destroyed ten years later. No, time is still constantly trying to correct itself so that nothing changes. Um, the other thing that I guess stood out that I'm still on the fence about, mainly because I think one of the biggest problems that DC shows have is that they reveal their trump card way too soon. Um, and Supergirl, it was her aunt, they showed in the very first episode, hey, the aunt is a bad guy. Uh, they could have just shown her, like, who is she? And then later on, oh yeah, it's Supergirl's aunt, that's crazy. Um, but they just showed it way too soon. In Arrow, they showed that his mom was working with the bad guys in the very first episode. And I'm just like, okay, you're revealing all of this way too soon to where I don't even really know the main character well enough for this to be an emotional, oh my gosh, moment. Um, and just like that, in this episode... I, I already knew, I knew from the beginning, like, whenever he was getting on the ship, and she's like, how did it go? He's like, just how we thought it would, we need to leave now. And I'm just like, they're trying to make it seem like the Time Master say, okay, when I'm like, they didn't really. That's, I've seen this kind of done before, where they don't show the answer, but then later it's revealed, oh yeah, they didn't really say yes, I just, I, I disobeyed them and went ahead anyway. Um, but the thing that I wish they kept a little bit of a secret for longer is that he immediately tells him after he after he reveals the fact that the time masters didn't give him permission to do this he reveals that they aren't actually legends that they are actually insignificant to the future timeline yeah so the the show that's called legends of tomorrow instead of let it, instead of letting us believe that they were legends for longer than an episode they reveal in the very first episode they aren't actually legends. And even the two bad guys who he told were legends makes sense why they were helping because, you know what, yeah, they're bad guys, but fame and fortune? That sounds great. I'd love to be a legend. But even he, even they, not legends. And the interesting thing is they still decide to help out anyway. Um, and... Not that that scene is bad, like how they all decided they were going to help out. Um, I did like how they handled that and how each of the characters had their own reasons for wanting to help. 
<clears throat> um, but I just, I wish they would have kept that a bit more of a secret because it was kind of obvious that the Time Masters didn't give him permission. But I actually thought, yeah, maybe these people really were great heroes. You know, some of them look like they could be. Uh, and so to reveal that they are actually insignificant in the future timeline, it makes me just say, why? Why did you tell me? <laughs> why couldn't I just? Why couldn't you let me believe for a little bit that they were actually legends? Um, and once again, once that was discovered, another thought popped into my head, and that is, what if they're insignificant because they were plucked out of the timeline by him, and so that's why they're insignificant? You know what? What if that's the reason? And once again, got me on the track of thinking, what if you can't change time? What if it's always just going to be how it is? Um, which, of course, I, I feel like that's going to be revealed at some point that, you know, as much as they're doing to change time, most of it, I feel like, has already happened. Because you look at what um, Vandal Savage is doing in 1975, it looks like he's got like an, a bomb of some sort, like an atomic bomb. And, of course, in 1975, nothing really big got destroyed with an atomic bomb. So I'm thinking, what if, obviously a bomb didn't destroy anything huge in 1975, at least not that I can think of. So what if they stop him, but that's just part of the timeline. That's what already happened. That's kind of my thought right now. It's as they go forward, as they're doing different things and stopping him at different times, uh, different times of the world. What if this is all just part of the plan? All part of the timeline? Yeah, they stopped them here, but they were supposed to. They already did that in a different timeline. Um, so yeah, that, something interesting to think about going forward, and probably one of the reasons why, even though there are some things that bothered me that were bothering me with some other shows, I'm able to overlook them because the premise itself is fairly interesting. And the idea that they've got going and what they've shown so far in the show makes me think that there's something deeper going on. And I'm kind of excited to see exactly what they do with it and if they take all of the potential that they have right now and keep using it. Because as we've seen in several shows, sometimes there's a lot of potential and just not enough of it gets used. But we'll see where it goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I am very excited. And I think that's about it. I guess I'm talking about the characters really fast. Uh, the Time Master guy, you know, th the scene that they show with the, the woman and the son getting killed, I didn't think much of it until he said, you know, what what did Vandal Savage do to you? And I'm like, oh, I, I see where you're going. And sure enough, it was his wife and kid. But I like his character just because he's kind of, he has his moments of frustration with them because they're from the past. But at the same time, he's all, he does have a bit of lightheartedness about him and it, some funny moments. Uh, the, two, the two criminals, I'm assuming they're criminals in the Arrow and Flash shows, or you know, at least one of them. I do enjoy both of them. The, the one guy, not the bald guy, the other one, he just talks so proper. And like it doesn't sound like how a criminal, like a hardened criminal would talk. Like he just... There's something of, I, proper is, I think, the right word, but it's just, it's funny how he talks and seeing this guy who's just a criminal, um, and then the other guy's a bit more like a, uh, you know, a thug, <laughs> just, he wants to beat up people, and he has, he has some funny lines because, you know, at the end they're all asking, so is everybody good to do this? He's like, I like to kill people. <laughs> it's like, yes you do. Um, Hot Girl and Hawk Man are interesting enough I like the fact that they're getting some good story going on to tie them into Randall uh, Vandal Savage uh, I feel like their story may be more uh, intricate and more focused on because of their connection to Vandal Savage um, but I don't we'll, we'll see how much of that is going on and the fact that they reincarnate in a new life means that they might die um, but then, you know, they travel when they travel forward in time. They're still there because they died back then. Um, but you know, that's that's just something interesting to focus on. Also, the fact that 
since you've got such a large cast of characters, I'm wondering how many of these characters are going to lose their lives in this adventure, uh, and how long they plan on going with it, because it could be one of those things where they stop Vandal Savage at the end of this season, only for something else, just like the Time Master said, something else more horrific pops up to try to destroy uh, the future, and so now, you know, the next season is about them trying to stop that, that would be that would be something interesting to uh, to think about. Uh, the the two guys that become Firestorm, I guess, fairly interesting. Uh, not entirely like you know they're they're not really gripping yet. I did I did like the kid's explanation of why he wanted to help out. You know, being on the football team, watching people, you know, watching one of his teammates put himself on the line to protect him. Uh, I, I like that analogy that he made. It made good sense, um, but the professor is just kind of like typical professor, like, I don't know. Um, and then you've got Sarah, Laurel's sister, who's one of, you know, one of the League of Assassins, so she can yeah, seriously do some damage. And then you've got uh, the Atom, and I'm just still making the comparison to Ant-Man. Anyway, but you know, he's fairly interesting, just seems kind of like he I don't know I can't even describe him yet because I don't know much about his character but anyway yeah the characters are fairly interesting I like the the cast that they pulled together the the fact that it's a fairly large team means you've got several different interactions going on whereas if, if, you, if you only have like one small team of four or five the interactions are fairly limited you know like how how much can you do with that? Well, not as much as when you've got a cast of nine characters. Well, now you've got several different interactions. You can only get through like half of the interactions in maybe three episodes. Um, so, you know, that that is exciting to see. But, like I said, I, I think there's a lot about this episode that gets me excited, even though I didn't, you know, there's still parts I didn't like. But let's see where it goes, and yeah. Let, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this episode and what you think of future episodes, and I'll see you at the next review. Peace out.